Hello everybody, we, we apologize for uh, those technical challenges. Uh, the most important thing is that we're going to zoom right into the conversation and hopefully we'll have a smooth conversation. So um, let's zoom right into it, Mr. Nidoho. So I know that land in Ghana um, is owned by different people. Yes. Uh, we have different types of lands in, in Ghana. Yes. Can you please take us through these different types of lands? Okay, so Ghana, Ghana's land tenure system has its peculiarities. Uh, we often set an example with the French countries. The French countries, all land is owned technically by state. Right. It makes it easy to deal with. Yeah. But we adopted a British way of doing things, the Crown way of doing things. So in Ghana, we have two main types of land. We have public land, and then we have customary land holdings. Mm -hmm. That's the general broad headings that you have. But for public land, we have two types. Mm -hmm. Land that state has acquired, that state land. So the state would have gone to some family's tool, some customary, and acquired it by law. Mm -hmm. So states would have absolute ownership of that. Then there's another, another version of public land that is vested land, where because there is some disputes where for planning purposes or for some other reason, government says, I'll manage it on behalf of the stool. So government is the one that can grant, they will take the rent, but the beneficiaries, the stool will be benefiting from the, right. the income out of it. So that's a public land okay. species, yes. Then we come to the private or the customary land holdings where you would have stool land administered by a stool with its principal elders. You have family land, which will be land owned by a family, by a family head and its principal members. And then you have individuals, you have companies, and any other entity that can own land. So that will describe the types of land that we have right. in Ghana. Um, now, let's dwell here a bit. If I'm going to get a land, how do I know that this land belongs to uh, stool, belongs to family, belongs to the state? How do I know? Okay. So you would see a land that you thought, oh, it's nice, mm -hmm. or you've seen an advert, or you've seen something. All that you know about it is what the person is telling you right. it is. Mm -hmm. So that may give you an inclination of what the ownership is. But for you to verify, the Lands Commission has offices in all 16 regions. We don't have a central database. So you can't do a search in Accra, in Koforidia, for instance. Right. But we have an Accra office. So do we have an Eastern Region office in Koforidia? So what you would require is a site plan as a basis for a search with the Lands Commission. That will confirm or disconfirm what the person who claims is the owner is. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, again, there's a little bit of complexity there because if the family has not registered its interest, you are likely not to find the family's name in the records of the Lands Commission. So the search that you do at Lands Commission gives you some information to the extent that the family or the stool or the individual has registered his interest. Mm -hmm. If he hasn't re registered his interest, you may get go away with a search that will tell you nobody has registered you may also come to Lands Commission, and when the family is claiming it is for them, it is state land, <laughs> or it is vested land, or it is for some individual. Mm -hmm. So the Lands Commission search is critical in you understanding what the claims by the individual who is selling is. Right. If that the person's interest doesn't show, and we have typically... When you say register an interest, do yes. you mean registering the land? Yes, re mean? registering what has been given to you, the interest that they're giving you in the land. So for, I would have gone ahead to explain that when you say you are buying land, mm -hmm. you are buying an interest in land, that's what we say. Yeah. So that would mean, uh, if you are using a company, you say you are buying some shares in it right. for a number of years or right. some. So that's what it is, just to make it uh, simple. So unlike a car that you buy absolutely and you drive and it's yours forever, it's like, you may lease, you may also, if we're not in Ghana, we're in the U.S. somewhere, they also have people who lease cars. Mm -hmm. So you have leased it for a number of, of years and you are driving it. After a number of years, the owner can come back. The, what the company you lease from, can you surrender the car to the individual? So in Ghana, if you are buying land also, 
you must look at what interest you are acquiring in the land, uh, which may be a freehold given to you absolutely, or a leasehold for a number of years, or a license which is permission to use land, which the fittest and all those people use. Like so, you said in your introduction, Mikasa helps people in renting, buying. So the renting will be more of the shorter term uh, leaseholds. So that's why you will be getting. So whatever document you are registering with the Lands Commission will be the agreement that the parties have. Mm -hmm. And for what number of years, or whether it's absolute or not, that's what you will be registering. So when I say interest, that's what I mean. Okay. Um, so let's talk about, so for instance, uh, family land. Yes. Um, we've had a number of cases about people, you know, one person coming out from a family to say, I'm selling this land. Um, if I was buying a land and I was dealing with somebody who says they are the Igusu opinion of the land and they have the authority to sell the land, do I end there? Do I take his word for it? Okay. That's part of the complexities with land administration in this country because he says he's an Igusu opinion. Where do you verify that he's an Ebusi opinion? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where the difficulty comes. It is his claim. If there's a rival Ebusi opinion, mm -hmm. you may finish dealing with this person absolutely. Right. Got a document, gone onto your land, only to hear that a rival Ebusi opinion has come and says it is not this Ebusi opinion. That is why in 2020, when we passed what we call the Land Act, uh, which is Act 1036, the law in section is 14 to 18 try to introduce what we call customary land secretariats, where every customary land holding must have a customary land secretariat. So they will have their mini lands commissions, as we call them. So when you go to that customary land secretariat, you are supposed to be dealing with a secretariat that can tell you, let you know who the right about your opinion is. Wow. If there's dispute in that family, then you have a problem. And therefore, it will be a red herring mm -hmm. for you to walk away and say, look, until they sort themselves out, I'm not ready to invest money in this transaction. So to verify who an abusive opinion is, there's no register <laughs> yeah. that you can just walk to. If it is too land, you can go to the regional house of chiefs and go and consult the register mm -hmm. to be sure who the register is. That gives you a certain platform. But for families, we don't have a register mm -hmm. or a place where you may be able to go. So right. that adds to the confusion. Yeah. So my next question was going to be about, say, stool lands. Yes. Um, that also, we've seen a number of issues. Ex exactly, there. absolutely. Um, what is the... If I saw a land, yes. and it, I say, you know, I find out it belongs to... Um, it's a stool land. Yes. Um, what is the right way to, first of all, how do I find out okay, who, who, who exactly is belongs to so and more, who to be dealing with? So more often than not, you do, say you found a land in some Kwapimi area mm -hmm. or somewhere in the Volta region. First of all, the nuances of the local area would advise you. We always say in the northern Ghana, even though we have stools, is the Tindanes, what we call the, the land, even in Greater Accra. Customarily, it was the Wulomos, the those we call the fetish priests, are the ones who managed the land on behalf of the stool. So it is easier in Ashanti region, for instance, where we know the overlord is the Ashanti Hines. So it's it's not in dispute. Right. If you know it's a stool land area, then the next thing for you is to find out who the legitimate right. stool occupant is. Mm -hmm. That legitimacy can only be confirmed. If there's no dispute, you know everybody will point you to one place. Right. This is Nana's palace. Mm -hmm. This is where it is. As I said, by the law now, Nana will be dealing then through its customary land secretariat. So you may not need necessarily to deal with Nana directly, right. but you go to a customary land secretariat, they will deal with you. You go to Nana for the signing of the document. But if there's a dispute, that's where the advice will be to either walk away <laughs> which will be the most prudent, but most people are willing to take the risk in co proceeding with a transaction where they believe that whenever they sort themselves out, <laughs> I would deal with whoever the, the winner of the dispute. Right. That in itself is a risk yeah. factor that you'll be taking. And 
And that's what makes the land administration in this country further complicated because we always set examples of where they were protracted disputes. And for instance, where in the northern region, the Dagbon chieftaincy um, matter was raging, finance commission hands were tied because you didn't know who the regent was. So who do you go to? Yeah. And if you try to meddle in, if you try to deal with one party, you are meddling in chieftaincy matter, which you shouldn't yeah. be doing. So um, it's to deal with land and who the owner is. It's a level of patience. And if the laws are applied and work the way they should, we should get to a stage where it should be easy to identify whose land starts from where, right. where it ends. And we are trying to do that with legislature. Again, I refer to the Land Act that says in Section 182, all customary land, land holdings should register the larger interest. So my advice earlier on that you may do a search and not find the family's name will become moot if all families or stools come and say, this is my land, I want to register it. Lands Commission cross-checks with your adjoining properties. Make sure that there are no overlaps, there are no disputed areas. Once that is agreed, then we can put it in documentation-wise. And then we know where your land begins and ends. But in Ghana, we have very few defined boundaries for customer. Government land you will get. Mm -hmm. Because once government acquires, it goes through the rights we have this instrument, it will define the boundaries before the executive instrument is published and all that. So for government land, we can show you where it begins, where it ends, mm -hmm. and all that. For some customary land holdings, you can, but not for most of them, sadly. Right. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about government land. Yes. Um, that also, let's say I saw a land. Yes. Uh, how do I know it belongs to the government? Okay. And who would I be dealing with if it was government Okay, land? so... First of all, how yeah. do I know that uh, government land is... Available. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I could read where you were going to. <laughs> For government land, the complexity is that government owns 20% of the land in this country. Okay. 20%. 50% of that 20% is the Akosombo Dam acquisition. So it's not even usable land. It's land that we acquired for. Wait, what you say is the so, Dam? So, so government owns 20% of mm -hmm. land. That's the last research that was mm -hmm. done. That may change maybe right. over the years. Now, half of that 20% is the Akusumbo Dam acquisition. That's the acquisition that got us the Akusumbo Dam. Mm -hmm. That has VRA, you know, all the way through the eastern right. region, going into the Volta region. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's the, that acquisition alone mm -hmm. is the one single largest acquisition that we have in this country. So you can understand that government land itself is now just some 10% yeah. effectively. Because Akosombo Dam is not, mm -hmm. it's, it's just. Uh, so, government doesn't publicize like you have, like you would have expected that, oh, there's land available, say, in Accra. Mm -hmm. we are, there's, this area is the, is the land. But every Ghanaian is eligible to get government land from Accra to Borga. So, if government acquires land, it acquires it for a particular purpose. Mm -hmm. It may be for airport, it may be for school. And the Constitution states in Article 20 exactly what purposes for it must be for a public good. Right. Housing has also been defined as public good. So to facilitate housing may also be defined as a public housing good. Housing for... Uh, to facilitate land, land for housing, for instance. So you want to acquire... Government can acquire land mm -hmm. and give it to individuals to build. Right. Government okay. can also buy land and give it to, say, state housing... Okay. Or Tema Development Corporation, or for some other affordable public agency, affordable housing. That's also right. a means of facilitation okay. for housing. Uh, in fact, now in the Pokwasi area, the Ministry of Works and Housing, with the government acquired land, have entered into some trans land agreements with some private developers. So, government may facilitate the base, right. which is the land, and then the developers come and develop, mm -hmm. and then they are able to sell. So. For you to identify whether land is government land, you may go through the search route. That is one. In some regions, eastern region, for where government has vast lands um, acquired, for, um, vast land, vested land, for instance, that they are managing. Most individuals' land, they may be buying, they may be state land, mm -hmm. technically. So they would, the customary authority may attempt to sell the land to them, 
or lands commission may prepare a scheme which is the the most appropriate and then uh, invite individuals who are interested to apply so you apply <laughs> i apply everybody applies and then based on your first come first set basis uh, some people would have if it's available so in the early 60s 70s where the population was less less pressure <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, you could see a lot of, so you look at the inner cry, look at the East Legons, the North Legons, you find out that there were more public servants, yeah. uh, businessmen, people who knew government land was available could just apply and then they were written to. An offer was made and then they got to the government land. Yes. Okay, so I'd like us to go into details, details and talk about the acquisition process for each of these because okay. I'm sure there'll be some slight differences. Slight differences. But before that, Quickly, um, talking about government lands, are there certain lands that people shouldn't buy? Yes. So if you do a search and it's government land, mm -hmm. nobody can give it to you except the government. Right. And the government operates through lands commission. That's why the constitution says in Article 258. So if it is government land, the only institution, simply that I'll give to you will be an other government lands commission, government acting through lands commission, has given it to somebody, and the person is giving it to you, or Lands Commission has given it to an entity like State House and or, or TDC, and they are giving it to you. So you shouldn't be approaching land that somebody is telling you. Oh, you've done a search, it's government land. Oh, but government has done some white paper, or oh, don't worry, you buy it, we'll do something to protect it for you, please. Uh, and it's very government land in the nature in which it's managed often seems to attract a high value because of just the, the base in which, and that's what the real estate companies are doing. You get the base, government may provide services, roads, water, light, before they start demarcated properly, have a good record system keeping. So people seem to be inclined to be where their state lands are. So don't buy land, not only with state land, but once you do the search and, so I'm an individual, I'm Timothy, I'm walking by and I'm, purporting to sell land to you, and you do a search and it's for a stool, for instance, obviously the individual doesn't have capacity mm -hmm. to sell. So you must abandon me and go and look for the, the, right, right, the right channels to, 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 to so buy. So I was also thinking, I mean, I'm sure that, so for instance, um, Akosumbu, yes. right? I'm sure that they are setting portions of the lands that are not habitable. Yes. Good. So say maybe wetlands yes. or uh, certain cases, how do we know that maybe those lands are um, not supposed to be sold okay. or you're not okay. supposed to build there? So, so, so the management of state land is in collaboration with the town and country, what we call, we formerly used to call town and country planning, mm -hmm. which is land use and spatial planning authority. The people who write the stock work. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, just to sum up, yes, so our friend, the planners, so they demarcate areas and whether it's a wetland, whether it's a playground, whether it's just as I drove to because it's nice office, uh, compliment to you. <laughs> There's a little park that used to be just about 200 meters from here. They used to play football. In the scheme, in the government scheme, it was designated for a park. So it will stay a park right. because that is what it's been designated for. Government will not give it to anybody except for any purpose that will be for a park. If you are going for a permit, the assembly will not give you a permit mm -hmm. for any construction except you, you conform to the user. So within government and every other land uses, there's a saying that your ownership ends where the authorities, the planning authority, gives you permission to do. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, you find that if the permission for the site was, say, for a um, playground and you were desirous of building a school here, the planning authority's work is what should stop you because you need a permit to build. Mm -hmm. Lands Commission being a government agency and about to give it, should not give it to you. So should, that, should it have been with private developers. So uh, a school has land somewhere. It wants to give out. That la land will be carved out into small lots so it should have a church somewhere, a school somewhere, this somewhere, that somewhere. That is what should guide the allocation of the plots. Right. So once you are not within a, 
an area that can be granted, they themselves should be advised uh, by it. So by the land use and special planning law, uh, 925, the law is to say public spaces should be taken over by the assemblies to manage so that it doesn't become available for individuals. To, to, to now let's talk about the acquisition process for yes. each of these types of lands. Yes. Let's start with uh, stool. Okay, so I would sum it all up as the acquisition process is just one way. Right. Is the, the the most important thing is who you will be dealing with at the mm -hmm. end. Right. So no matter whether it is two family, individual or government, you still have to go through the same acquisition process. One of course, you will see or hear about land and you will be interested in it. The site plan becomes your next important request from the person selling. Uh, where is the site plan that covers this particular land? Because the site plan will be telling you where on this earth that land is located. Right. Now, that site plan is the instrument that will, you use to do a search with the Lands Commission. That advice from Lands Commission will let you know whether to proceed further or not. Now, what most people will do is that they don't see the site plan until the end when they have paid for. And that is where most of the problems begins. So the advice will be get the site plan at the beginning. And I say, I set examples with a car, for instance. When you want to buy a car, the first thing that is in your mind is, can I get a car papers? Why do you want it? Because you want to go to DVLA to be sure it is in his name. You want to check whether the chances. Yeah, lots of people get their car papers after everything. Because they are, it's a car you can't drive it home. Right. Land you cannot drive yeah. it anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and that is why I see the risk. The ownership, yeah. your evidence of ownership with a car. will be drive it home. Nobody has caught you on the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you're okay. So if he gives you the paper even sometimes two months before, it's in your use. But when you land, you'll be leaving it in the bush. Yeah. You'll not be packing it home. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to be cautious at the beginning. Right. Before you buy, and you may not even be developing it immediately. So the problems may not be immediate. Mm -hmm. So you thought, oh, I bought a land. You are happy. You've shown your family papers, the land, and the paper is under your bed. You didn't do a search. <laughs> it's when you are coming to develop, maybe in a year, year and a half, two, that you want to register that you are now here, and, oh, the land is state land. By that time, you will not be finding the man who signed the indenture for you. He will be having challenges on the site. Maybe he sold it to somebody else before he sold it to you. Then the problems you could have stopped right. beginning, beginning would now be facing. And by that time, you would have paid money. Yeah. So uh, the, the, always the advice I say is that don't be looking for the site plan at the end of the transaction. And don't be in a hurry to listen to a person who tells you that, oh, if you don't pay today, by tomorrow it will be gone. Mm -hmm. I always tell people that, why rush somebody to buy something? I want to be sure. Yeah. I want to check on it. I want to be Especially very careful. Especially something like land, which is very expensive. Very expensive. You must be careful. You must totally be careful. So, and I've been advised and I've worked in Lands Commission. We all may buy land once in our lifetime. Maybe twice or thrice, if we think of it as an investment. Right. But if it is for a place to lay our heads, once. <laughs> twice, maybe if we are more blessed. Mm -hmm. Three, four, five is only because we want to use it as a means of investment. And it's a big investment. You build, you spend money. It's maybe about the biggest investment you do in your whole life. So for me, the caution always, the site plan, do your search. It's that search that would begin to advise you whether you want to proceed with a transaction or not. After that, you must do the due diligence on the site, meaning you went to the site with the guy selling the land and you saw some people just looking at you and saying hello. You must go there alone again mm. because Ghanaians are not as straightforward as our Nigerian friends. Let me put it that <laughs> way. So in Ghana, we are even worried about something, but we can't tell you. Yeah. So we are waiting for you to leave. And I've had experiences where I've led people into transactions where we went there, and everybody said hello to the person purporting to sell. We went there again on a Sunday with other people, and everybody came out and said, hey, this land, they've been fighting over it all. Last time, people even came to fight over it here. But I asked, why didn't they tell us when we came with the boys who were purporting to sell? But it is the Ghanaian. And again, I advise you, it's a cultural setting that we are in. 
sometimes you are working with a chief, nobody wants to tell you. He's, not, he's also staying on his land. So I always say you yourself should do a due diligence of going to the land. And so you if, encourage that people ask around? Yes, ask around. That, that, that is your of the book, right. <laughs> at our call of the book, uh, due diligence mm -hmm. you must do because it's important. Mm -hmm. It may give you just a neighbor, if you are lucky and the place is developed, this. Oh, who did you buy your land from? He may just tell you, oh, I got it from Mr. A uh, or Mr. B. I have. Um, and then that should be good enough for the initial. Then they are going to move then to the second stage, which is then entering into the transaction proper. Okay. Where now you are going to, so if it's state land, you know that, oh, then I must be approaching lands commission. Okay. If it's two land, I must be going to the chief. If it's family land, I must be dealing with the family head. If it's Mr. Appear as an individual, then I must be looking for who is Mr. Appear. Mm -hmm. Then we start doing the, the documentations, and the, what we call the indenture popular labor, which is the deed that we are doing. Then he's doing the deeds for you, the party sign. Then you are going to the uh, high court for oath of proof. Then you are coming to the lands commission to do a stamp duty. Then you are coming to register. Then you are done with your registration. Is it difficult for people to go through all of these processes, especially after um, now you're getting into the transaction proper, proper yes. getting all the documentation, going yes. to the courts, going to the lands commission, blah, blah, blah. So uh, it's, just a, it's just moving from the document. So you've, done, you've signed the documentation. You have to go to the high court. People who have time, so assuming you are busy, for instance, Monday to Friday, your holiday, your, your breaks are very short. Mm -hmm. uh, how many days we have leave in a year? So people find it cumbersome right. uh, because you, you, a high court, if you get that today in a done day, stamp duty, you submit your document, an assessment is done. So you, there's a waiting period. Then they will communicate to you what fees you must pay. You must now pay those fees. Then you come and pick your document up before you now submit for registration. In the process of the registration, because of the caution that most people will not have I, I used a professional or may have not have done the search at the beginning. There may be a few back and forth so between the lands commission. Mm -hmm. That's where people become frustrated because simple things I may write to you. So imagine you didn't do a search and you came to submit your document for stamp duty. At that duty stage, lands commission is there's a tax for the transaction and there's no search in our records to confirm whether the person who gave it to you is the right person or not. It's not our business. Mm -hmm. It is a, a GRA stamp duty that Lands Commission is helping administer. It is when you submit for registration that we are now going to comb through our records and see whether it matches with what you bought. That is where we will now try to communicate with you. For instance, no, we can't proceed. It's state land. Uh, the person who signed for you is not the rightful family head. Before you continue, yes. this registration comes in... Um, when? At the end. At the end. When you have finished the transaction, I'm sure you've paid your monies, both parties have signed, mm -hmm. and then you go gone to the high court, you've done your stamp duty right. also with the lands commission. That's when you're about to submit to register. Okay. So I take, I use the visa ways, for example. You've not submitted your visa, your, your application for your visa. All you've done is you pay the form. Yes, you bought your form. You've done this, you've done this. It's when you submit your visa application forms yeah. at the embassy or the some collection point is when the embassy is going to look through at the time that you bought your visa form and want to take your pictures uh, yeah, 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 yeah. so it's whether it meets the standard or not is when you submit the form so registration is when you are submitting for us to register that's when we'll mm -hmm. be looking through we'll be looking through your documentation but if the person had gotten a side plan from the beginning yes. and they've done their checks, yes. wouldn't that have revealed to them yes. the right? Yes, so by the, at that time, your registration is more likely to go smoothly. Right. Uh, so you are not going to meet the <coughs> bottlenecks that right. another person may meet. Somebody may just be pure luck, mm -hmm. may not do the search and may come through and may go smoothly because it's the right person mm -hmm. who was assigning right. to you. But... The caution always is never, never take a man's word in land transactions. Uh, <laughs> never, never important. take a man or woman. Don't, don't. Sometimes even they think that they know. Yeah. Assuming you've lived in a, a house that your father owned for ten, for your best part of your life, yeah. you believe your father has it. You believe he's registered it, but he may not have registered it. So he's passed or maybe passed it on to you with confidence 
<laughs> you tell somebody you are selling it. I also buy it off you because I believe. Then I'm coming to register only to find out that your dad never registered it. So what does that mean? If my dad never registered it, it means the land doesn't belong to him. No, it means that he has possessory rights over it. But when he's about to transact with it, the revelation will come that it is not in his name. Right. So he's not, his, his interest doesn't show anywhere in the land. In that way, how do you correct that? Because so the land actually belongs to So he's in possession of it. So assuming you do that and you do, you do a site plan for that person, he comes and he search and it's in the name of a certain stool or it's in the name of a certain this thing, they will begin to tell you that please go to that stool for a documentation, for instance, because you must correct what it says. Mm -hmm. Or they have a family who, the dad passed and gave the land to the kids. The kids, and it was government land. The kids came only to Lands Commission to find out that the dad never registered a transaction between him and the man he bought it from. Oh, so the land is still in, in the, the name of the, yes. Yeah. So they came to us and they were, that were panicking. And I said, no. But have you ever mentioned this? So they remember there was something, so they went back home. Luckily for them, they found their transaction, mm -hmm. their documentation, so executed document between their dad and the, and the, and the right. man. Their man had, was diseased. But mind you, we want to connect the dots between yeah. one Mr. Amponsa and Mr. Pia, who may not have any relationship. Yeah. So it's always, and that's where the difficulties <laughs> are, arise in, in documentation. So many people are living comfortably on lands in this country where they may not have registered, <laughs> they may not have bothered to register. And assume that they are in comfortable possession. We, we always encourage you that register us. You are leaving a problem for the next generation to carry on. So Absolutely. it's it's valuable. Uh, land is a valuable asset, and you yeah. must be able to. So and that's very insightful because um, I'm sure that these things happen a lot. A lot. You live a lot. in a house your whole life. Your whole life. Uh, your grandparents have lived there, and no, all. Yes. You want to sell it. You go and find out that the land is not actually in your family's name yes. that it's in, it's important uh, yes. to register yes. then now let's talk about um diasporans yes. um as you said this process may be cumbersome it yes. takes a little more time yes. if somebody lives outside the country and they want to purchase their land here how would you advise they go about it okay. when they can still go through all the due process okay we have, Lands Commission has tried to improve by introducing online services um, where searches can be done in Greater Accra in six other regions uh, online. But I often tell the diasporans, your best bet is to get some lawyer, some surveyor, some established entity that can do some of because you can't do the legwork if you are in in somewhere comfortably in America. And I had the opportunity to speak to some I think diaspora network about six six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And this some of some of the concerns that they had. And I said always don't just jump into the market. In other jurisdictions, for instance, you can't just jump into an entire land land market without relying on a professional. Mm -hmm. you, you can't do that. So the advice to them is that if you are afraid of your family members, <laughs> as most people may be, you should be looking at engaging. You and tell, what do you lose if you pay a little consultancy for somebody to do this due diligence? That saves you throwing your money away. So the advice would be get some lawyer, get some surveyor, get an established entity you know you are engaging to do these searches for you. And then get them and verify if the advice is not to proceed. You don't, proceed. You don't breeze into Ghana for two weeks. And I assume that in two weeks, you if you've entered, if enter, you can enter. If it was all state land, for instance, and we had a, you are entering lands commission, and lands commission is guaranteeing the use for you, and then you are getting across in somewhere in France, that's fine. Somewhere in Togo or in Ivory Coast, that's fine. But Ghana doesn't have that luxury for you to just go and enter in and say it's available, and then you go and buy. Always make sure that you, you rely on a professional in, in clearing your head before. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about um, because we talk about registration. Yes. I know there's a difference between plotted land and titled land. Can you take us through? Yes. So they are just terminologies. <laughs> Uh, that does not make it complex. <laughs> so, the, the, I, so no, 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 no. These are these are everyday questions that mm -hmm. people ask, and I'm saying we they are just terminologies. Okay. So if you say plotted, 
it's, a, it's, it's come out of where in the process of title registration, there's an indication on a certain map that this application is pending okay. and therefore would be completed after a period of time. Also, in areas where there's deed, we say deed registration, in Ghana, we have two forms of registration. We have deed registration, we have title registration. All ends up, you are registering. Okay. Now, where there's no title registration, plotting defines the fact that your, your document has been entered in a register. Okay. But title registration, obviously, is when you have ended the process and you have your title certificate. So when you have your title certificate, then people say, well, I have it's titled land. Mm -hmm. But the plotting may be describing somebody whose application has gone through maybe stage one, stage two, stage three, and is pending completion. Right. That doesn't mean it may be completed. It, it, after that, there are further checks to be done. For instance, publication will be done. Somebody wants to cross check. We have some additional cross checks that we may do. We may, we may or may not conclude, but it just shows that you have met some threshold where we have prepared um, what we call the cadastral or the parcel plan, which are regular plan. That's all it means. So people should not be, the titled land will be the ideal. Right. The plotted land will just be indicative that we are in the process of registration. And is it, um, could it be the case that uh, plotted land or somebody who has begun that process doesn't end it. Yes, very, very Is possible. it advisable to buy that So land? once you are, you've seen a plotted land, you must do further inquiries with the land registry on why. So you see somebody who claims he's plotted the land in 1997. The first question I ask is that, so 1997 till now, <laughs> why have you, you been doing? <laughs> if you're a child, you should be getting close to <laughs> marriage. So you sometimes the gap of the plotting should be able to give indicative of you that there's yeah. some reason yeah. and we must admit that all plottings were not done uh, in the with the intention of completing registration mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we, we, the way our records were kept in the 90s and in the maybe early 2000s anybody who made a request for a plan was also indicated on that same plan. We didn't distinguish the two plans. Mm -hmm. So people would just realize, oh, I have it plotted. The first question was that, please, conclude the, the title registration, and I'll come back to you. That's when you start hearing the stories. Some genuinely are in the process. They've reached maybe a stage, they are hard up, they want to do. Those people are willing even to come to the Lands Commission and make an inquiry with an officer. Please, this person has this, he wants to sell it to me. Can you inquire from the file, for instance, where which stage he is and whether it is registrable or not and you'll get that advice very quickly so that in the pro in he, he can truncate his process mm -hmm. and you take over right. from him it's very possible um, that is done but please don't be too excited about <laughs> the plotted land uh, the titled land is what you should be more 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 more, more willing to okay. do okay um if you just joined us we're having an insightful conversation with uh surveyor timothy anido Esquire, mm -hmm. I must add, <laughs> from the Lands Commission, and we've had an interesting conversation so far. A lot of revelations. Um, we have some questions in the comment section. So we have a question from Mami Idu Bobi. Uh, this is a question we've answered, but maybe uh, she didn't get the response. Maybe we can just go. But she says, "How can we get to know that government lands are available?" And People are really interested in government because lands. of security of tenor. No, oh. so because you are dealing with government, you know that the likelihood of getting that same land sold to two or three yes. or four persons is yeah. very low, and then it's government records is kept well. Mm -hmm. So there are people, private people, who keep their records as well as 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 mm -hmm. as, as government does. People will also be drifted to them. Uh, government land, if you say, is cheaper. The 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 idea in governments. Uh, leasing of land or sale of land, whichever way you want, but let's use leasing as the correct term, is to facilitate housing. <clears throat> so after government has put in all its infrastructure, it wants to give it to you at a price where it will encourage you to develop very quickly, let me put it that way. So people, are, and government land, yes, you can do a search, you can even write a simple letter, I receive letters like that every day, <laughs> that say, I want government land if there's some available in Accra. Unfortunately, 
I may not have to give, but you have the every right to inquire if it's available. We should let you know. Only that, you know, government is not too inclined to acquiring too much because of compensation costs. Uh, if government acquires, compensation has to be paid. And also, the customary landholders are eager to manage their own. So unless it's really, really, really uh, urgent and for government purpose, as I say, in Article 20, government will may, may shy away from acquiring so much uh, because government's intention is not to become the landlord mm -hmm. through the instrument <coughs> of acquisition and then disenfranchise or, or take away land from, from, from uh, private, mm -hmm. private owners. So, so if, I, if I get you right, um, the government doesn't really go out there to announce no, that. No, 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 no. But you as an individual... Can, you can, can inquire. 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 It, and government does that in small ways. If it's available, I've always heard this question and I scratch my head because <laughs> it's as if you have to be in an inner circle before you yes. get to know. Truth be told, government is not, doesn't advertise in the papers, for instance, right. and say, we have land available. You can imagine the mayhem that may happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, please. Okay, so somebody wants to know, does the Land Commission prepare planning, planning schemes? schemes? No, that's, that's the sole preserve of the Land Use and Spatial Planning mm -hmm. uh, Authority, which is LUPSA. They are the, I say, the stop work friends. That's the planning people. So they are embedded in every district, every assembly, let me put it that way, whether it's metropolitan district or municipal. So they are the ones in charge of planning. So they are the ones who <coughs> advise government on, even if it's government land, they will tell us this land is available. That land is not available for maybe, you take, give this one for a church, this one for a school. So driving here, I see, you see not Legon Clinic, just down here. This is a government area managed by government. So therefore, uh, that site was set aside for clinic. You go further down, you find same charismatic evangelistic ministry that is for church. Mm -hmm. Next to it is a school. So you see the order and what is there. It was the planning authority that advised the lands commission and therefore you have to give it to those. So the planning schemes are done by the assemblies. Okay. Question yeah. here. Is there a recommended body to do searches? Are real estate agents uh, authorized to do searches in lands or uh, is it an uh, ID for an agent? To no, everybody can do a search, every individual, <coughs> anybody. Once you, you apply for a search, mm -hmm. uh, we are ready and able to, to conduct a search for you. The police, judiciary, everybody does. So people do it as consultancies. Okay. That's individuals who are doing it. So yes, but individual on your own have a okay. way to apply. Um, this is also a bit technical. I'm not sure. I'm sure you will. Let me just yeah. read it. Are we so freehold? Are we still allowed to sell land as freehold and leasehold? Uh, if leasehold, how many years and how do you renew your lease? Okay, so it's four questions in one. <laughs> <laughs> so one is freeholds. Mm -hmm. So what that, what that, when a person says a freehold, what does it mean? Like the name, is land that they've given to you freely to hold until Jesus Christ comes. Oh, okay. It's not for any particular number of years. So when it's given to you freehold, the, answer, the next question was, whether are we allowed to give freeholds? Mm -hmm. For two lands, we had stopped way after independence. So for two lands, you cannot, you could not. Okay. For family lands, individual lands and other type of lands, you are allowed to until 2020, uh, when the Land Act, the Act 1036, was came into force, and therefore that land has that law has also stopped families from 2020 December from uh, giving freeholds. So freeholds is now an endangered species. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not Why? Some, Why? because the the policy thinking is that. Imagine a stool giving freeholds to individuals. If you get to a time where the stool will become landless, True. well, the stool is managing the land in trust for its people. Right. So it's unfair mm -hmm. that the, the next generation comes and you are a, 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 a chief in, in name, in territory, but mm -hmm. you don't own any land to manage. That's wrong. So that, and that's what families also must do. They are in, is in trust. So the whole idea is that if it's a number of years, then you, you give it to a person for a number of years. One generation mm -hmm. will come and renew. Yeah. And also, leaseholds have 
the essential covenant of payment of rent annually. So it brings income in to the family or the school uh, that manages. So, so the last part of it is how is it renewed? Yes. And you have to look at Section 50 of the Land Act to see how you renew um, um, leases. Uh, the law now guarantees renewal for Ghanaians. So whether it is in your document or it is not, it's implied by law. So when your lease expires or is about to expire, you go back to your the one who gave it to you, and then you seek for a renewal. And but renewals are not free; they come at a cost. The next question people ask is that: so how much? Would that mean I'll buy it again because I built on it? No, renewals often comes at a cost. Uh, what we call valuers will say we determine a certain premium, so it has its own evaluation mathematics. It's like telling me to a doctor to describe how surgery is done. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what they do is that they quantify the property, its potential rent, and place a certain fees on it. So I always say that in the near future, the, the law says it should be given at a reasonable price. The courts will be determined what is reasonable, reasonable and what is not reasonable. But that is what it is. So yes, you can renew. And she asked also somewhere in there that well, how many years? There is the year limitations for what you should give to you, some are by law. For instance, if you are not Ghanaian, our constitution in Article 266 says you can have it only for 50 years at one particular time. When it expires, you can come for another 50. Okay. Uh -huh. So if you are non Ghanaian, that's your maximum you may get. Mm -hmm. But if you're Ghanaian, so whenever. If you look at this land act again, depending on what you want to put it to use, if it's agrarian, if it is uh, for uh, some particular uses like poultry, is 25 years for cereal is 25 years for tree uh, cocoa and those uh, those tree and cut and uh, I think cattle ranching is 50 years so there's only the years are capped in some acts and laws but uh, we don't have a standard so people say 99 years please it's not written is there something we adopted from the British way of doing things uh -huh. and then so if you are non if you are a Ghanaian you can get even thousand years if you so wish. Yes. So if that brings me to to something. If uh, so, you lease out a land yes. for hundred years. Obviously, different generations come yes. after that. After hundred years, who do you go to? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering. So I, I could read that. So, you know? so you gave me land. It was your land. And we all lived for 80 years and we left. Somebody will inherit from you. Mm. Somebody will inherit from me. It is those people that are claiming through that lineage are the ones. So if a, if a chief gave it to me today, the Asantehene today was not the Asantehene in 1996, mm -hmm. 1995. There was another one. But whatever the one in 1995 does binds this one. Uh -huh, and would bind his successor okay. also after. So it's just the generations will deal with their problem mm -hmm. when they get there, uh -huh, mm -hmm. or as soon as they get there. Like government, I've worked in the Lands Commission for some way. I've inherited records that we've engaged people in for a long time, and that is my lot. Mm -hmm. I'm also creating problems now that <laughs> people will inherit in years and, yeah. then, and then they'll resolve. Okay, this. we have some more questions. Yes, please. So this one says, uh, by is there any family land in Ashanti region? And how do we address conflict between traditional ownership and legal ownership of land? So the legal and the traditional should be one. <laughs> it should be one. It should not be separated because a customary head or chief cannot come and deny you of your legal rights. So it's just like similar to what you said now. If his predecessor has given me a land. I have the legal title to it. It is mine. The fact that he comes and he disagrees with it and wants to create problem for me will not change anything. Mm -hmm. So, Bashiru, once again, the legal and the customary holding should be. Now, the issue of family land, we've always known that Ashanti region is owned by its two. I've heard in recent All times... All the lands in the Ashanti region. That is the, that is the, the, the popular knowledge that oh. we have. There are a few families that have attempted in recent times mm. to try to assert some form of ownership. But we don't go into that. What we know customarily is the fact that it's like this tool. Mm. If any family believes that it has this assertion, 
the other has to go to court to prove so or has to make a grant and test whether it's registrable. But people have gone to court in some cases, in, not in Ashanti region, but in some places, to assert their rights as a family. And it's been recognized by, <coughs> by, by, by law. So okay. that's it. Um, this one says, how long does it take to get a land title? Ha! This is a question that I brief in and out before <laughs> I answer. <laughs> because embedded in this, it's a trick question. Okay. People may be saying out of experiences. Mm -hmm. Because they've had such a bad experience, they came, it took them seven years. So I'll use my friend Salam, a friend of mine that I went to uh, Katanga with. Good friend, an architect. He saw me three years ago and he was registering his land. So I helped, he submitted it, mm -hmm. let's say, and then both of us went to sleep. I never followed up. So he called me last week. We always talk. He said, Ah, Timothy, this is my registration. I said, ah, Salam, hmm, I've even forgotten. You know. Can you give me the reference that you had the day we submitted? Then he sent it to me. And I said, Salam, in this three years' time, are you sure it's not completed? He said, oh, you, you Lance Commission, you does that, you are not done. <laughs> then I was there when I said, oh, Salam, just check with our customer service unit, just in case it's been done. I was there when he texted me, oh, Timo, I'm shy. It's been done. <laughs> and it was oh, done a go. year and a half ago. Oh. But he never did a follow-up. He believed that it was a bad institution, <laughs> and therefore it takes forever. But he can now testify to the fact that I didn't do much of a follow-up after that. He, but he had bought from somebody who had a land certificate, for instance. It was a part transfer. He had done his searches before. I had guided him. So it had a smooth path. Yeah. So, but you can submit, and you will not have a smooth path. Why? Because your checks at the beginning were not done. Mm -hmm. So you do it first. They say, oh, the person who sold it to you is not the right when do this you give us a post box that doesn't exist or it goes to so a letter may be lying in a post box <laughs> or it comes to my post box i don't know i just take oh at this one i don't know anything about it. i throw it away somewhere so people should take seriously the, the way they give us our records mm -hmm. coming back to the registration the land act says within 90 days of your submission lands commission should be able to let you know whether it will be registrable or not we are not there yet the last statistics we did if everything is fine, um, eight months should be able to do. But some people take slightly longer, maybe because of a certain request that they didn't come. Some people take shorter because they, all the requirements that they, we ask them, they have submitted them at the beginning. So there's no back and forth mm. uh, in it. So I often say, when you submit something, don't <laughs> give up on the system and say, oh, it takes forever. And don't deal with middlemen or people, agents who you cannot verify the facts that they are saying. So if you are dealing with me and I'm your agent and I'm following 10 documents, anytime you call me, hmm, you know the man, he's not signed a document. Though. Oh, he even says he wants money. But you've not checked with the institution, which is Land Commission, which has offices sitting <laughs> who can verify for yeah. you. And if you <clears throat> keep relying on middlemen's conversation between you and the institution, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to do that with DVLA a lot in my younger years. <laughs> uh, renew my passport. I have some agents that used to come for it. Whatever he told me, I thought was the truth. <laughs> Until I decided going there myself. Ah, it's not that difficult. So I ran the guy out of business. <laughs> now I, I do. So that's what Lands Commission is trying to do. Trying to make its services easier so people don't have the fear yeah. to submit. And I understand that it's a baggage out of mm -hmm. our, our experiences. But can we begin to trust uh, and then cross-check? There's nothing wrong in engaging somebody to submit. But at every time in time, ask him one question. You said you submitted for stamp duty. Where is the receipt evidence and so? And then if you have some, they cross-check and be sure that that receipt itself is valid and it has been submitted. So you don't keep too long to inquire. Uh -huh. But if you give us the right number, the phone number, that we, we can be able to do. Anything. Questions are coming in really fast. Yes. <laughs> um, so this one says, how does consent play in the land registration process? Yes. And for which land registration do you need consent? a consent? Yes, so consent <laughs> is where, just from the word consent, where you need somebody to agree to a certain transaction. So for state land, for instance, consent must play because when government gives it to you, Daniela, and you sell it to me, Timothy, how does government know that you have passed it on to me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because yes. its records must be up to date. So if you have an obligation of paying rent to me, for instance, how do I, I don't come and chase you, Daniela, 
and then when you have sold to me and you have left. Mm -hmm. So consent is critical for every transaction. For school land, consent is critical. Mm -hmm. For family land, you meet somewhere they have requested for so. So for family land, it's not generic. Mm -hmm. It's when the document, the transaction says you, you require consent, you go for consent. Mm -hmm. For individual land, usually you don't receive, you don't get consent playing out with it. So okay. that's it. Um, how do we get titles for apartments you buy? It's the same as any other title. The only difference is that the plan that you have is what we call strata plans. So the surveyors will still do the same for you. It's just like a, it's just a plan describing which floor, which uh, your mm -hmm. your floor area, and still so lands commission will register it for you. It's the same as we do with any other land. But um, I would like so. I'm just imagining if yeah. I buy an apartment. Yes. Um, what are we registering? Exactly. <laughs> we are registering the exact <laughs> apartment, the floor where it is. The common, what we call the land, there's a common use areas mm -hmm. like your gate area and all those things. Those remain for, and the document will indicate that your, your, your apartment is this and the use of the common areas. Mm -hmm. So, Lands Commission will register for you. So, we create a map that will show where, which floor of that, that block you are, like SNET flats, mm -hmm. <laughs> like all the other flats we do. That's what you'll be registering. It's, it's not new. It's a concept that's been in Europe for years. Right. Uh, we have also now adopting that. Uh, the villages, all those ones, we do we do consents for them. And then okay. Them. So this one is a pretty lengthy Nothing. one, quite specific. But I'll just quickly go through. Yes. So we have some land in Ibri, which was yes. registered in 1979. Yes. It's about three acres. But now when you search, it doesn't show. Rather, other people's names pop up. We realized that several years ago, when the Lands Commission migrated from the manual system to surveying, or surveying to the new system, uh, it wasn't smooth all over. Like in our case, uh, that, that when you do the search at Koforidia Lands Commission, which handles documentation in debris, etc., with the old site plan, you will not see your name where it should be seen. Uh, you may find out that um, Okay, it may not be seen in the assessed report concerning the same location. Yes. You may find out that the land on their paper or survey map is several feet of plot away from where it should be if using the old survey mapping system. Yes. This happened in several places in Accra too. Okay. Yes. So it says, our land in the new search report is over a thousand feet away from the actual location on the map. This is a bit technical, but the survey boss will understand. Okay. Now, the grandchildren of the original owners who mm -hmm. sold the land to our late dad have now taken advantage of this and are selling some lands yes. in the area all over again. The lands which their great-grandfather chief had already sold. Mm -hmm. um, okay, he said the Covergia Lands Commission asked us to do a cadastral survey, right. which we've done, but still we haven't made any headway. For about three years now, we've not been able to get our land re-registered. We also had a lawyer write to them. So his first question is, what is the lands commission, what's the land commission's position on a situation like this? And what prevents them from getting a property restored to its rightful owner? So this is um, part of what technology has done to us. Mm -hmm. Technology that was playing games with yes. us in the beginning. <laughs> so what it's, you know, he said 79. So mm -hmm. we used to do what we used to call chain surveys. So um, if I go to a site with you, your reach is longer than mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's possible that we may be managing the same land, but we may get it different. Survey had not improved as it is now. Digitally, we had not got these machines that we take to the site and all that. So it was all based on feats, people measuring. So yeah. it's true that his grandfather's site plan may have, in his, their mind, they were representing the site here. Mm -hmm. But as improvements have come in, they, they must be more, uh, more precise. That calls for technically putting everybody where he should be. Each, both, each, all of us, both him, his neighbor, his neighbor, the one after. The difficulty for Lands Commission comes in where by the time you are ready to do all those shifts, transactions also have taken place next door to you. So we can't just carry you and set you on top of <laughs> your neighbor's when we've not got the consent of your neighbors to move them also, because maybe on the ground, he is having problems. Some people are comfortably sitting. They are all very fine. Yeah. It's just that because survey has improved, you need to move 
the records of everybody. So I can appreciate his his mm. challenge mm. his challenge there. The regional lands officer Isa Malamisa in in Kuforidia is more than competent to deal with that. It's and it's an exercise that we are trying to do holistically. So I understand his frustration, but you should understand that if we were hasty to do it, it would it would affect other transactions next right. to him. And it's unfortunate that the land owners are taking advantage of this mm -hmm. to um, sort of double sell. That shouldn't be the way to go. They should understand because he has evidence of transactions that he's entered with the, with the father. And that's what I was trying to explain earlier on to you. That if your grandfather did a transaction, mm -hmm. it's binding on you. You can't just wake up today and claim that. But they will use technicality such that your, le your records information says you are here, 1,000 feet here, and therefore you shouldn't be here. But if you go 1,000 feet, people would have, may have yeah. built and yeah. living there, and therefore the intention of your father was not to put them 1,000 feet yeah. away. So it's a... But it's a, it's a, what's the way forward? It's a thing. So the, 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 the Kofoidia, I'm happy he says they've written to Kofoidia of a three years is quite a long time. But uh, I'm happy he said they've written, they've done the right thing in re, re surveying and writing back to the, the, the Kofoidia office to try to get the realignments done. And I believe the Kofoidia office will, will deal with that matter with, with, with okay. all the competence. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're going to have to be wrapping this conversation up. Look, I see how the questions are coming in thick and fast and it looks like we may have to do a part two of this conversation uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, that's just if you're available we'll, we'll, we'll think of it <laughs> <in there. laughs> so um, we'll, we'll try and have a part two of this conversation because I see how land issues are uh, as we said in the beginning it's an expensive venture uh, it's an expensive investment and so uh, matters relating to land quite serious and it's it requires that we are armed with all the information we can get before entering into it or before moving on with it but i'm going to end with this last question about land guards yes um it's it's quite a thing yes uh here in in ghana let me just in the urban it. areas the <laughs> <laughs> oh really yeah because it's no it it is in, it is a it is it, it shows evidence of where there's pressure on land. Mm. If I go to my village, nobody will be guarding any <laughs> land <laughs> because the pressure is not there. So you notice that some regions even, if somebody was speaking in some regions, you say, oh, this is new. Mm -hmm. So it is prevalent in where there's densities. Right. So where there's competing interests mm -hmm. for, 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 for land. So it means to protect um, um, my land. In Ghana, we don't recognize even land guardism. So Section 12 of the New Land Act has made it such a criminal offense that if you are prosecuted, you have between five, five to 15 years to go to jail. Before this act came, often the police used to use uh, what we call the criminal code. So trespass, mm -hmm. trespass to land. And they were all misdemeanors. Right. So even if you go to jail, it's like some three years or some one year you are back mm -hmm. to the streets to disturb somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but now the law has tried to elevate because we, re we recognize that yeah. it's a menace that we must deal with holistically. Um, so now it's, if not even the guard himself, the one with the muscles, mm -hmm. but those who have the macho pocket also, yes, who, who are that. going to finance that business. So the law defines that or those who encourage, incite, those who also finance or encourage them mm -hmm to do so are also eligible to go to jail. Mm -hmm. It's up to the police now to activate. I'm happy to say that some prosecutions have started based on that section of the of the of the law, rather than using misdemeanors and trespass. Mm -hmm. And it's a complex business yeah. because of what the financial influences that come in it, the way you need the police as the ones to deal with it as a first step. Mm -hmm. So if the police officer is not the most educated in terms of land administration, he may be leaning. Uh, to, but we're happy. We're in the property fraud. We're in collaboration. We've had a lot of conversations. We are, now, before they do anything, they do a search and try to get some advice from us before, as part of the investigations. And I think we are moving to a better place. I always say, if two people do it and they go to jail for it, that is two people short of a certain group. 
then another group goes. And the unfortunate thing is that once it starts happening, people are tempted to look for rival groups right. to fight each other rather than uh, reporting it to the police because they may feel that mm. uh, it will be slow or it is slow. But then, so let me just try and play the devil's yeah. advocate. What then is the best way to, for instance, land encroachment issues, yes. right? Uh, or somebody else has come to just start building on your land for whatever reason. What is the best way? The first thing, you, you report to the police. Okay. If you have your documentation, you show to them that this person is getting onto okay. your land. Stop him, get the police to stop him. Court is expensive, so people don't want to go mm -hmm. sometimes, but you can look for the court route, which is an injunction to also formally stop the person. Those are the ways. Don't be waving your document and say, oh, I'm waiting, I'm looking at him. You know, I'll break it, I'll break it. Don't do that. Try to take steps at the beginning, yeah. as soon as you've seen him on the land, to make a formal report to the police. And if you have, you ask everybody to bring your documents once you have. I've known people who have come to me who by mere showing up their title, the police doing a search, the matter has ended. Mm -hmm. They've taking the person off the land and the person has gone. But act with speed. And because land is left in the bush, it's not a car that you take <laughs> home. Make sure that you have always one eye on what is happening in the bush. Or else, before you say Jack, yeah. that bush becomes something else. You come and you can't identify your land. You walk. I'll end with my boss who said he had the land. He hadn't gone on for about six years, seven years. And when he went, there was somebody had built comfortably he comes from the north uh, so <laughs> this was a gun man who had built and was on his veranda doing poetry from so he smiled at him and he said oh chief what are you looking for he said oh uh, my land ah, what is your name so he mentioned he said ah, so when you're coming for the north did you bring land along and he says it jokingly but it shows you that neglect yeah. of your property may lead to something now what are the alternatives you go to court, you go and break that house, you go and send litigation for the next number of years. So he could have dealt with it earlier on if he had one eye on it. So we should not assume. And he said he still has a land certificate at home to deceive himself that he owns a property. <laughs> and he just has to remind himself always of what neglecting your responsibility. And that guy who is on that land has taken a big risk. He can go to court and come and break it down. But how do people have such... Such vim. Yes. Because the systems have not punished people enough right. for doing the wrong thing. Like you say, if you say land guard. I've gone to do programs on media houses where people can call in. So I know this guy is a land guard in this area. I say, if it is wrong, why would you... That guy be still known as a land guard. I say somebody, is a thief in this area. Yes. <laughs> but yet we all see him and we just call him a thief. And he's still walking around. Mm -hmm. That means it is wrong. So it's the responsibility of the police for prosecutors to make sure that those people are not on the streets. Or else we say it's a popular land guard. <laughs> I say, wow. It's like saying it's a popular arm robber. <laughs> you know, so that's how we should view it. Yeah. That uh, if they are punished for it and it's off the streets, mm -hmm. Of course, he won't come again and he may be advised to some other persons not to. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, guys. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Mr. Nido. Uh, this has been an insightful conversation. Uh, hopefully, we can cajole him to come back for a part two uh, sometime soon. Yes. But thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much for giving us your time. We hope this has been insightful for you. We hope this has been insightful for somebody you know who's been seeking answers uh, to some land issues. And we're grateful that you could join us. My name is Daniela, uh, Head of Marketing and PR here at Mikasa. Thank you to my team, um, Samuel Wayo on the technical bench, uh, Isaac, Yvonne, to my bosses, Kelvin and Rashad. Thank you so much. And thank you to Eunice. Uh, for, uh, for putting this together, for getting this busy man into our seats. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you once again for joining us. Good afternoon. Thank you.